Okay, so let's have a look at the file structure that we get when we download something from the RD Textures homepage. So we're getting an ambient occlusion map, uh, which we can use to enhance the shadows maybe a little bit more later on if we are not completely satisfied. A bump map, uh, of course. We're also getting all maps in 4 and 8K, so we can choose if we really want to go uh, full resolution or maybe just a half resolution, maybe to save some, some RAM and uh, stuff like that, depending on your machine, of course. Um, then we're also getting a color map, we're getting a depth map, which we can use later on uh, for displacement, of course. Color map goes into the diffuse channel. Uh, then we have a glossy map, uh, which we can use, of course, in the specular channel. We're getting two different ones. Uh, we're getting a normal glossy one and a high glossy one, uh, really depending on how much we want to have those roots, in this case, want to have how much, how much light they pick up, uh, how much highlight they will get. Then it also comes with a normal map. Uh, if you're maybe working with Unity, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Cry Engine, you name them, uh, you can use those maps, of course. And then we're also getting a roughness map in 4 and 8K, uh, which we can use in the glossiness channel or in the roughness channel, really depending on which render engine you're using. They're all called differently. Okay, so these are basically uh, the maps that we are getting, and I will show you now how to set them up correctly. All right, so let's set up a basic plane here in Cinema 4D and let's also set up a Corona light. So let's go Corona light and let's bring this up here a little bit and let's also make this light bigger. Let's scale it up, something like this maybe. All right, then let's bring it back here and let's maybe bring it down like this and Let's also create a null object here. Let's put in our corona light and now we can rotate perfectly this area light around our plane so we can see a little bit better what's going on. Let's set up corona renderer. We just need to click here on edit render settings and select here corona render. And for the render settings we don't really need to change much to be honest. Um, I think the, the basic settings are just fine. If you really want to go unbiased or something like that, you can of course change this here, the secondary resolver, also to pass tracing. Um, I will just leave it here for to UHD cache. Uh, I think this is just fine for this tutorial. So really not much to set up. Um, we can also check the light here now. Uh, we can mm, put up here the Corona VFB if we want to, or we can just simply Let's click here on render, so we can see, I think the light output is just fine, or we can just simply click here, it will probably load in the same time, and we can see, okay, looking pretty good, I think the light is good, if not, we can change the intensity here a little bit more later on, maybe, um, here in the multiplier, but I think for now, it's just fine. Okay, so let's jump to the next part. So, let's set up a displacement um, inside of Corona, which is pretty pretty easy um, we can just go corona and let's create a new material here and here we just simply tick on displacement and bring in our displacement map so our depth map 8k let's drop this just in here into the texture channel and here with the max level we can of course uh, control how high our displacement should be so let's just simply uh, drop this here onto our plane Let's go a little bit closer here and let's make a test render if this is already working. And yes, it is. Looks pretty good. I think the light is a little bit too strong, so we might need to go down here in the multiplier. Uh, let's bring this down maybe to something like 10. Maybe this is a too harsh change. Uh, no, I think 10 is just fine. Okay, it doesn't look so blurred out anymore. And yeah, we can change the height here if we want to. Uh, pretty easily, just simply bring it down to one centimeter, make another test render here. As you can see, not really much displacement is going on. Let's bring it to five. Let's bring it to 10, like we had it. I think 10 is a pretty, pretty good value for those maps. And yeah, this should be it. So it's really, really easy. This is how you set up the displacement map. And in the next chapter, we talk about uh, the roughness and the specular map. So welcome back and uh, what we need for this is 
the reflection channel so for the specular and the roughness map to work so let's tick this on reflection and in the color we will drop our uh, glossy map so 8k glossy goes here into the reflection and uh, specular color or in this case reflection color and in the roughness or glossiness our roughness map will be so let's drop this in here and this is basically it so let's check what we get probably not so much because this shot was really done on a really really dry day so even if we load those maps now um, the change is not really huge of course there's a little bit of a change uh, but since uh, like I said um, let's look here at the demo of those maps this was really really short on a dry day so as you can see not really much reflection is going on um, or much glossiness so this is this is why our image still looks like this of course it looks a little bit more glossy than before not really much because like I said it was shot on a really really dry day okay so this is how you set up um, the glossy and the roughness map inside of uh, Corona and in the next chapter I will talk about the bump mapping Okay, all right, so let's set up the bump map. We just need to activate it here and let me maybe let get a little bit closer here and let me find a really, really nice route also so we can see, check out the details a little bit more uh, what the bump map is really, really doing here. Yeah, I think this is just fine. Here we can see this route. We can see really, really good. So let's just simply go to our textures and let's drop in here our bump map 8k into the bump slot and let's make here strength is now set to 10% let's maybe put it up here to 50 this might be already way too much whoopsie this wasn't I wasn't intended to do that let me remove that and let's make another test render and let's see how much detail this bump map really adds and it really adds a lot of detail which is uh, I think uh, pretty pretty cool a strength of 50% might be just way too much for now So as you can see here, down here, we're already starting to get in these little, little details of the bump map. Uh, like I said, a strength of 50% might be a little bit too much. Um, I would go probably of a value here between 10 and 30%, really depending, of course, also on how much far away you are with the camera from the, from the displacement itself. And of course, you can also, if you have an animation going on, adjust this uh, bump map accordingly. Just simply set up an animation and... Uh, animate the strengths if you want to let's maybe go 100% here let's go really nuts and then let's maybe change it back down to 0% so you can really see uh, how much difference this bump map really makes on those displacement maps this is really really high quality I mean those maps are definitely the best in the world that are available right now so this bump map really adds a lot of detail so this is how it looks now right now with 100% strengths of the bump map uh, let's maybe bring this down here to uh, 0%. Let's maybe only look at this root here, down here. And you will see we will lose overall here a lot of detail. Uh, even so, the displacement map is already pretty, pretty good, but the bump map just simply adds this little bit of extra that I absolutely love. And as you can see, we really have lost here a lot of detail from the bump map. Okay, so this is how you set up the bump map. In the next chapter, I will talk about color and ambient occlusion okay all right so let's load our color image and our uh, ambient occlusion so what we need is the diffuse channel and uh, let's tick this on if it's i think it's already ticked on by default and let's jump back to our textures and let's load here our color map and this should give us our final look with all the maps uh, besides the ambient occlusion so let's make another test render here and let's see what we get. Okay, it takes a little bit with the displacement to load. This is just normal with every single render engine that you will ever use. So yeah, and it already looks pretty, pretty freaking good. Uh, this is why those RD textures are the best maps in the world. Let's maybe zoom out a little bit more so we can see a little bit better what's going on. And let's re-render this. Let me just take a little bit here. And yeah, all right, looks already stunning. I'm loving it. Um, 
And let's maybe also load the ML occlusion map. So I'll show you quickly how you can set this up. Um, you can also, you also have here Corona ML occlusion, but this is not something that you want to use. This will not work as you have expected. I think this is only if you want to uh, maybe render out an ML occlusion pass with Corona. So let's just simply, if you want to use it the right way here, texture and let's go fusion. And we will set the mode here to multiply. And here in the blend channel, we will just simply use our um, ambient occlusion map. So let's drag and drop it in here. And this will give us a little bit more shadows here, uh, a little bit more of an enhancement in the darker areas, which is also pretty, pretty cool. And yeah. I think this is basically it, how you set up the color channel and then also if you want to use the ambient occlusion map as well. So as you can see, we're already getting here a little bit of enhancement, which is pretty, pretty cool and uh, can also help uh, if you want to hide some bad geometry that might happen uh, through displacement, really depending on the map, really depending on how close you are to displacement and so on and so on and also how high your displacement is. Um, at some point, no matter how good the displacement map is, um, the geometry will just simply freak out a little bit. And if you want to hide this a little bit more, if you have a really, really high displacement, you can use this ambient occlusion map as well for that. Um, in the next chapter, I will also show you how you can enhance those maps a little bit more. Uh, maybe the reflection map, um, the glossiness or the specular color, and also the ambient occlusion map and so on and so on with a little trick. And then we can also maybe hide some details here a little bit more or bring in a little bit more glossiness. So yeah, catch you in the next chapter. Okay, so what we can do is just simply um, bring in here, maybe for the ambient occlusion map, and let's say we wanna have a little bit more shadows. We can just simply bring in here uh, a colorizer uh, if you want to. So let's put a colorizer over that map. And let me get rid of this red knob, just simply drag and drop and set this here, this knob here to white. And if I want to change this here now a little bit, um, what I can do, uh, first of all, I mean, what I also could do, I could play here with the exposure. This would be really, really easy to change this map, but I, I will leave this for now. Um, with this black and white values, I can give this just a little bit more shadow if I want to, or a little bit less. So let's just simply drag this over here, and this will give us a lot more ambient occlusion than, than we had before. Without doing anything in Photoshop, and this is what this whole idea is really about. So I don't really have to jump into Photoshop um, to really see what's going on. Okay, the final render is not working Corona right now. Let me check this if everything is here set up correctly. I mean, I don't, I don't even think we need to uh, render this to the picture view for now. You will see pretty quickly how those changes are looking if I'm doing this here on the ambient occlusion map. So let's see this again. So as you can see, we're getting a lot more shadows here. Really, really a lot more. Um, we could also, of course, make this more extreme and more extreme and bring the blacks up and so on and so on to get even more shadows. I mean, this will not look so natural anymore. And as soon as we pull this back, um, it will be back at normal, at a normal value. So this is just a really, really quick, tr uh, quick trick how you can do this inside of Corona without doing anything uh, inside of Photoshop, uh, which I think works pretty, pretty well. We can do this here, the exact same thing here on the roughness if you want to. So let's bring in here colorizer over the roughness map. And with the black and white values, we can now say, okay, how much glossiness we really wanna have. So let's say here the black is 0% glossiness while the white value is 100% glossiness. We can also change here the darker areas a little bit more. And let's maybe enhance here the darker areas a little bit more. And let's see, okay, I want to have here glossiness of 0.78. So we will type in here value of 78. And this will give us more glossiness and we can do the exact same thing, exact, exact same thing here on the specular map, sorry. Um, let's change this down. Let's bring this here to white. And then we can also change this here. If you want to, let's maybe bring the whites in way more, way more, way more. So this will pick up more light and we're also getting more glossiness here. And let's make another test render. And you will see this will look now a lot more glossy. 
than before. Let's say maybe we want to create a rainy day or something like that. Then we can use such a technique if you really want to have more glossiness here. I mean, this is probably the only, the only thing why you would ever do that to make this look a little bit more rainy. As you can see, already starting here to getting the the area light already gets a little bit reflected on the floor and everything else looks a lot more reflective than before. So yeah, this is a really, really easy and simple technique that you can use inside of Corona without changing those maps, uh, maybe in a longer process inside of Photoshop. And yeah, this is how you set up and play around with all these maps that come uh, with RD textures. And I hope you learned a little bit something and I hope this made your life a little bit easier by setting up those maps. So thanks for listening and bye bye.